Welcome to GW Hospital HealthCast. I'm Dr. Mike Smith. We're going to talk today about the use of new technologies to increase kidney transplantation in minority patients. My guest is Dr. Keith Melanson. Dr. Melanson is the chief of the GW Transplant Institute and is a member of the medical staff at the George Washington University Hospital. Dr. Melanson, welcome to the show. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to go ahead and start. This was this was actually news to me, Dr. Mullinson. So I want to I want to start with this. Uh, this is a um, taken from uh, let's see a, a study published in the Journal of the American Medical Association, January 2018. "Quote: Black and Hispanic kidney transplant patients are less likely than white patients to receive a kidney from a live donor, despite concerted efforts over the past two decades to increase organ transplant donation." End quote. Well, that was amazing to me to, to, to find that out, Dr. Mullins. What, why do you think that is true today? Yeah, no, that was a great study, and, um, and it basically showed what we've known for a while. And the main issue is if you are um, African-American or Hispanic, there is a lot more kidney disease in your family. People that you know, either family or friends, have more kidney disease, they have more health problems, therefore your pool of people that could possibly donate a kidney to you is much more limited than Caucasian patients. And that's why it's so difficult for these patients to find donors when they need them. So, a very interesting problem, right? So, (laughs) Where do we go from there? So, so now we have, we've kind of known this. We have a good study, as you say, that, that, that makes this clear. Um, as a matter of fact, I think it, it, it said in that study that for white patients, the, the, they were able to increase up to 11% in their incidence rate for live donor kidney transplant, but black and Hispanics both decrease. What, what do we, well, I guess, what do we do with that? What's the plan? How do we overcome this? Well, yeah. So the, the way you have to address this is, you have to increase the options for these patients, for the recipients. And the way to do that is to make every possible donor more likely to be able to donate to the, to the recipient. You know, I tell all of my patients that on average, you have to have three to four good options for you to find one donor that works out because there's so much that goes into the testing and diagnostic studies that a lot of people that you might think are healthy will not work out and be donors. So three to four people. Well, if you're uh, African-American, which is in their group, there is um, four to five times the rate of kidney disease, it's going to be much more harder for you to find a donor. However, when you do identify someone, we have to be able to bring to fore all the technology to make that donor work out. And what I mean by that is it's very possible that the donor will be a different blood type. It's possible that the that the uh, recipient that needs to receive the kidney will have antibodies directed toward their donor. We see this at least 30% of the time in, in transplantation. Mm-hmm. This, this can occur when, like for women that have had children by their husband or or when the children, like let's say the children are adults and they want to donate to their mother, they the mother could have developed antibodies against her children when they came through the birth canal. These are the things that can disqualify people from being donors. And there is technology available where we can try to make these transplants occur. Right. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about that. But just to kind of summarize, so it's almost like we're we're the the black and Hispanic p- kidney patient is really facing two challenges, right? One is simply finding enough donors because the pool is smaller. But once we do, because that pool is smaller, that donor may not be perfect for them. And that's where these new technologies step in. Am I getting that correctly? Yes, that is absolutely correct. That is the, the, the gist of the matter. So let's talk then. We, we find that donor from that limited pool. How do we make sure that that donor is, is going to be good for this patient and that that, that that transplantation has a good outcome? Great. So, you know, one of the main issues is really just the blood type matching, being blood type compatible. In transplant, just like when you donate blood, usually what you're looking for is a blood type 
match or a blood type compatible donor, meaning that um, if the donor is blood type O, a, a person that's blood type O can give to a person that's blood type A, B, R, O. If the if the person is blood type A, usually it means they can only give to a person that is also blood type A. But what we have been able to do, um, and this has been around for you know, the last 10 to 20 years, we know that there are ways that we can, it's called desensitize. We can decrease right. your ability to react against a different blood type. So this is what we will do. And the technologies that we will utilize in order to desensitize a person against a, um, a person that has a different blood type are things like plasma uh, phoresis, a pla- or it's also called plasma exchange. And all you're doing really is you're culling away these reactive antibodies so that they don't react against the blood type. Um, the other thing that we do is we give certain medications that target the cells that create the antibodies, these B cells or plasma cells, in order to decrease the antibody production. And then that allows a person who is a different blood type to receive a kidney from someone that um, is a good donor otherwise. So let's say the recipient is blood type O. They would typically need another a blood type O donor. But in this situation, when you do a ABO incompatible transplant, someone who's blood type A or blood type B can then donate to the person who's blood type O after the recipient goes through plasma exchange and this desensitization protocol. Let, let me ask you, Dr. Mullison, how would you compare then the outcome, let's say, of a transplantation that happens between patients who are compatible based on blood type versus this type of desensitization process you have to go through? What's the difference? Or is it equal or does one do better than the other? No, it's a great question. And I can tell you that nationwide, the outcomes have been very similar um, between ABO incompatible live donor transplants compared to um, the typical ABO compatible. However, um, the best outcomes have been at the centers that have uh, lots of um, experience doing this. And um, throughout my career, we've done this um, many times. And I can tell you at our center currently at George Washington, our outcomes for these ABO incompatible live donor transplants are actually better than the ABO compatible. And this is not just here, but other centers that have a lot of experience doing this um, have seen similar results, um, like Columbia in New York City, as well as NYU in New York City. So, Yeah, do you think that, that, so that's really interesting, right? You would think that that wouldn't be the case. However, is it because in this desensitization process, are you dampening the immune response in general? And so they're not rejecting that kidney as much? Is there something there? Yes, I know. I think that's exactly what's happening because, you know, the the B cell responses are part of any immune response. And since we're focusing on the B cells when we desensitize these patients in order to receive an ABO incompatible transplant, I believe that it's helping to um, decrease a specific area of the immune system that we don't focus so much on in in the typical right. transplant. So I think right. that it gives a advantage. Right now, we are theorizing um, that this anti-B cell therapy that we're using for ABO incompatible transplants can be brought to bear for even compatible transplants because the outcomes have been so good. Right. So so, so let's kind of just summarize again where we're at. We have a, a limited donor pool for black and Hispanic kidney patients simply because there's more kidney disease in those populations, correct? So then once we do find a donor, it's often harder to make that donor a perfect match. One of the first areas we deal with is making sure the blood type is either the same or they have to go through this desensitization, which actually has pretty good outcome in larger centers. Are there any, is there anything else that gets in the way other than blood type for these types of transplantations? Yeah, well, the the other thing that happens with these patients that have limited access to transplant is that they wind up sitting on um, dialysis longer. So for your black and Hispanic patients, what happens is they build up antibodies just because they 
their blood has to go through this filter, the hemodialysis machine. So the longer you're on the hemodialysis machine, the more likely you're to have this other set of antibodies. It's called anti-HLA antibodies. HLA is um, the antigen that's on all of our um, white cells. When you build up these antibodies, that also encumbers your ability to receive a transplant. We see this a lot more in minority patients. So in much the same way as what we do for ABO incompatible transplants, for patients that have these other sets of antibodies, we also need to desensitize them. And we do it in much the same way, meaning they receive plasma phoresis or plasma exchange, and they receive anti-B cell therapy like um, bortezomab in order to decrease their B cell responses. And then they can receive a transplant from patients that might have HLA that they would normally react against. So that's another way to expand the options for those patients. This is, Dr. Um, uh, Mullinson, this is fascinating to me. And obviously, th- this is exciting work because helping more people get to that transplantation and make it successful is, you know, changes their life, right? So this is amazing work that I think that you're doing. How about this? In summary, when you look at the whole problem that we've been talking about, you know, less less donors for these black and Hispanic patients, the difficulty that the donor may not be a perfect match. What would you like people to know then about kidney transplantation in minority patients? Well, um, I think in summary, the, the idea has to be that we need more donors across the board. We need more deceased donors, so everyone needs to be signing their licenses and um, allowing organs to be donated after a tragic death or, or so forth. But in addition to that, we obviously need more live donors. So I tell my patients, everyone in your circle, all of your family and friends, you need to alert them of um, your need. I'm talking about people that have kidney disease, so that they can uh, realize that they could save your life if they came forward and were um, a donor. This is true for everybody, including minority patients. In our minority patients, I really do believe that the outcomes have been so good in utilizing these technologies that are available. I really believe it's just doing more of this and getting the word out um, like you're doing with this uh, phenomenal broadcast is is going to be a way to increase the number of these types of transplants that are done around the country. I just wrote a scientific paper, which is not published yet, but will be soon. And I am pushing the transplant community to do more of these sorts of transplants in the minority community in, in order to increase the rates, which are abysmally low because when you look at the rate of kidney disease in this population. So we just need to do more of it. Well, that's fascinating. Uh, work, Dr. Mullison. I want to thank you for everything that you're doing and also thank you for coming on the show today. You're listening to GW Hospital HealthCast with the George Washington University Hospital. For more information, you go to gwhospital.com. That's gwhospital.com. Physicians are independent practitioners who are not employees or agents of the George Washington University Hospital. The hospital should not be liable for actions or treatments provided by physicians. This is Dr. Michael Smith. Thanks for listening.